Hey guys, and welcome back to Rooted Homeschool. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about my favorite books for Black History Month. I've mentioned before that I'm a high school English teacher, and so it's been a passion of mine to really make sure that people of color are represented in everything that we do, in the texts that we read, in the videos that we watch, and the perspectives that we you know, take into consideration. The Black History Month is not the only time to read about black history. People of color should be represented all year long, no matter what we're studying. Black history is our history. Um, I know I mentioned these books in my video about my space unit, but just to give you an example of how whatever you're studying should definitely include people of color. This book, Mae Jemison, The First African American Woman in Space, is one that I have out for my kids during our space unit. And this is all about, you know, her experience, her life, and kind of how women of color are mathematicians and scientists. So I think this is a really important book. This next book is a fiction text, but it also does feature a young black girl as the main character. So I also think that's really important to note that representation isn't, it's not enough for them, for there to be a supporting character or a sidekick. Representation means strong black main characters represented in the text. So that's Gloria Rising. Two more from our space unit that I wanna make sure that I mention in case you didn't see that video. For these two books, both hidden figures. This first one is a picture book. So this is a really great one for younger kids or even older kids. My 13 year old read this and really enjoyed it. And then there's the young reader's edition of the hidden figures that was made into the movie. And I also really recommend that movie. So that's Hidden Figures. Both of these are by Margot Lee Shetterly. So definitely check these out. So I checked out a ton of books for Martin Luther King Day. And so the first one that I wanna show you is absolutely beautiful. It's called A Place to Land, Martin Luther King Jr. and the Speech That Inspired a Nation. And this is by Barry Wittenstein. And this is a really beautiful book that focuses on the things leading up to the I Have a Dream speech. And it says, Martin kept refining, painting with a preacher's fine brush, a light shade of wisdom here, a darker shade of frustration there, the darkest shade of four whites only everywhere. And so it's a beautifully written book that has unbelievably beautiful illustrations. At the end, there's information from the artist, there's biographies. This last page of the actual story, you'll see John Lewis, President Barack Obama. This is a really beautiful book and this is A Place to Land by Barry Wittenstein. The next book that I wanna to talk to you about is March on The Day My Brother Martin Changed the World. And this is by Dr. Christine King Ferris. Dr. Martin Luther King's older sister. It's her perspective and her retelling of the March on Washington. And she starts off with this portrait of her family and says, my brother Martin never bragged. Martin was always very modest. When we were growing up, mother dear and daddy taught all of us, Martin, our little brother, Alfred Daniel, and me, Christine, to do good for others. And then she goes on to tell their story. So that's March On by Christine King Ferris. The next one I want to talk to you about is called Martin's Big Words. And I just love the cover of this and kind of the joy that this captures. This one has three different awards on it. It is a beautiful book and this is about his life and his words. And it's a really great way to talk to your children, not only about this great man, not, not just about black history, but about the power of words. Some of his quotes are highlighted, like love is the key to the problems of the world. There's some really cool artwork and images in here. This said, Martin grew up, he became a minister like his father, and he used the big words he heard as a child from his parents and from the Bible. Everyone can be great. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't just an activist. He wasn't just a ma an amazing speaker, an amazing orator. He was a reverend, he was a pastor. And I think that really speaks to me because he took his faith and he fought for what he thought was right. And I just think that that's really powerful. And this brings me to a really great book, maybe for older kids. 
This is called Strength to Love. This is written by Martin Luther King Jr. These are his words, which is really cool. This is what Coretta Scott King says about it in the foreword. If there is one book Martin Luther King Jr. has written that people consistently tell me has changed their lives, it is Strength to Love. So that is Strength to Love. The last two, maybe for a little bit older kids, this one's kind of in the middle. This one is Martin's Dream Day, and this one has photographs of things like the March on Washington and Martin Luther King Jr. himself. So although some of those other books have beautiful illustrations, beautiful artwork, this one highlights that time in photographs. It's also a really cool way to juxtapose things that have gone on currently with protests, with the things that were going on during Martin Luther King Jr.'s life, and really just kind of tracing that history. So that's Martin's Dream Day, and this is by Kitty Kelly. And the photographs are by Stanley Tretic. Lastly, for my Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. books, this one is I Have a Dream, The Life and Words of Martin Luther King Jr. This has an introduction by Rosa Parks. Great way to follow this one up would be a book about Rosa Parks. This one also features lots of photographs. This has a lot more text. This could be used all the way up to high school and adulthood. Really powerful look at Martin Luther King Jr.'s life as a biography. So this is I Have a Dream, The Life and Words of Martin Luther King Jr. by Jim Haskins with an introduction by Rosa Parks. This next book um, is from the Women Who Broke the Rule series, and this is about Coretta Scott King called I Kept On Marching. This is about how Coretta Scott King kept going after her husband was assassinated, but this really talks about how she honored his legacy by continuing to fight. And it says, what I've tried to do is to empower people to understand that they can make a difference. So this is I Kept On Marching, and this is a highlight on Coretta Scott King. One thing that my kids and I talked about on Martin Luther King Jr. Day was sort of this interesting perspective of looking at Martin Luther King Jr. and then looking at someone like Jason Reynolds, who's a current young adult fiction author and poet and just amazing all around artist. Two of the books that I wanna highlight of his, although I love all of his books that I've read, this one is definitely for middle grade um, or higher, and this is called Stamped, Racism, Anti-Racism, and You. And this is co-written by Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi. And this really traces the history of racism in our country from slavery to modern day. And it really is important for children to be able to see and adults to be able to see how these things have kind of transpired over time to get us where we are today in terms of race relations in our country. So I think it's really interesting that it says, this is not a history book. This is a book about the here and now, a book about race. Super powerful book. Jason Reynolds' voice that comes through in his writing is just so engaging. Even though this covers history, it reads like fiction in the sense that it's really engaging. So this is stamped. Racism, Anti-Racism and You by Jason Reynolds and Dr. Ibram X. Kendi. The second book that I wanna to talk to you about by Jason Reynolds, I love so much, and this is called For Everyone. And it says, a poem, a nod, a nothing to lose. This book is so beautiful. It is a book, but it is a poem, and it is a letter to the reader. And I've, I just have to jump in and read Dear Dreamer, this letter is being written from a place of raw honesty and love. This letter is being written from the inside, from the front lines and the fault line, from the uncertain thick of it all, from a man with a straight line mouth and an ego with a slow leak, from a man doing it the only way he knows how, splitting his cries and his smiles right down the middle, swallowing his moonshine mistakes while in the sunlight his sweat irrigates his life, and that life he, like you, has been tilling hoping there's a harvest coming. This book is so good. You have to read it. Your kids have to read it. Read it aloud, read it together. The back says, this is for the courageous and everyone who wants to be. So for everyone, including you. 
two books that I love so much come from a series. This is Little Legends, Exceptional Men in Black History and Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History. And both of these are from Vashti Harrison. Every page is a short bio. It is so cool because you could in five minutes teach your child about an amazing person in black history that left an impact on our world. And some of them are from history and some of them are more current. Like here's Harriet Tubman. So those are from the Little Legends, Little Leaders series by Vashti Harrison. Next up is the book, Anti-Racist Baby. This one is for younger kids. Celebrate all our differences. Anti-Racist Baby doesn't see certain groups as better or worse. Anti-Racist Baby loves a world that's truly diverse. So this is Anti-Racist Baby by Ibram X. Kendi. If your child is too young to even understand what the words mean, just them seeing different colors on the page, people of different colors, and just normalizing that for them, because that is normal, will really help kind of shape this open and loving mindset in your children. This is Young, Gifted, and Black, and this is by Jamia Wilson, illustrated by Andrea Pippins. It says, meet 52 black heroes from past and present. Again, these are short bios. There's even a page on Martin Luther King Jr. with Venus and Serena Williams, Harriet Tubman again. Do you wanna show your shirt? The VP looks like me. And since we're on that, two books that I just have to talk about, Rooted in Justice. This is all about our vice president's life. And it's so interesting because this book ends with her running for president and having to drop out of the race. And it's so cool that now she's the vice president of our country. And it's a beautiful story that follows her all the way from her childhood. It shows her in church with her family. So just a really, really cool book and so timely. That's Kamala Harris, Rooted in Justice, and this is by Nikki Grimes. Um, this book is by Kamala Harris, and this is called Superheroes Are Everywhere. And so um, the back says, there were superheroes everywhere in Kamala Harris's life. Can you find them in yours? And I'll just give you a peek inside. Here are some actual photographs of some of the people that Kamala talks about in this book. And this page says, heroes stand up for what is right. And it just talks about like all different real life heroes. Like heroes aren't necessarily the superheroes that we see in superhero movies. Heroes are people who stand up for what's right. So this is Superheroes Are Everywhere by our Vice President, Kamala Harris. Really quick. What? Gia had to go get herself a snack. This book is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls 2. And it does highlight many women of color in here. For example, I used this when we were talking about astronomers in our space unit. This talks about Valerie Thomas and her contributions to NASA. So really cool way to highlight strong women. It is not about being rebellious in the negative sense, but about really like breaking barriers and letting girls know that like they can reach their dreams and they can do things that they never thought that they could. So this is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls too. The last group of books that I have to talk to you about today are all poetry books. So the first one that I have for you is 13 Ways of Looking at a Black Boy by Tony Medina and 13 Artists. So this one is one that we've done used for our poetry tea time. I'll share just the beginning of this one called 13 Ways an Introduction. And this says, black boys scrape their knees, they bleed. Black boys cry and scream. They tackle life like air gliding on wind, basking in a breeze. Black boys sit beneath trees, inhale fresh cut grass and dream. Black boys play with building blocks, are fascinated by clocks, cradle skateboards under their arms. Black boys love basketball and books and it just keeps going. And it's just a beautiful book that gives a perspective of black boys. So this is 13 Ways of Looking at a Black Boy by Tony Medina and 13 other artists. The next three books that I'm gonna to talk to you about are all by the Poetry for Young People collection. The first one is just African-American poetry. So poetry by all different um, African-American poets. And it also has beautiful illustrations. 
It gives a short bio about the author, which I thought was really cool. So some really beautiful poetry in here to get lots of different perspectives of African-American people, of black people, because I think one thing that's important to remember is not everyone's experience is the same and not everyone's perspective is the same. This next one is called Poetry for Young People and this highlights Maya Angelou's poetry. And you'll notice that although this one also has really beautiful illustrations or a different style to sort of go along with the style of her poetry. So this is a really great one. Um, some very well-known poems as well as some that may not be as familiar. The third one that I have from the Poetry for Young People series is one about Langston Hughes poetry. And you'll notice that all, it also has some really great artwork in it, but it also follows more the style of Langston Hughes poetry. So that's a really great one as well. Last book that I have for you guys today is called Like a Bird, The Art of the American Slave Song. I think this is a really important book and an interesting perspective because although it was such a horrible time in our nation's history, it's important to honor the people who had this experience. I think it helps provide perspective about what this book is all about. And it says, what does a bird have to do with American slave songs? Harriet Tubman, born into slavery around 1820, used to dream that she was flying over the landscape like a bird. Tubman successfully escaped in 1849 and later helped many others escape to the north. Her dreams echo a phrase that appears in the Bible in Psalm 124, 7. We have escaped like a bird out of the fowler's snare. And if you look on any given page, you'll have a song, an American slave song, and then you'll have an explanation about that song and a piece of artwork that goes along with it as well. So I think this is a really beautiful book on how to look at that time in our nation's history. So I think you can't talk about black history without talking about slavery. And you can't talk about slavery without talking about the people who experienced it and how they were able to get through it. So I know we talked about a lot of books today. So if there's one that you have as a favorite, please put it down in the comments so other people can check it out. I'll link as many of these as I can for you in the description so that you can order them off of Amazon and get them right away on Prime or at least check them out from your library. I checked most of these out from the library. So hopefully you check out some of these books during Black History Month and the rest of the year. If you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe, throw a comment down in the comment section, and until next time, stay rooted. <laughs> You're so silly.